So, you know, I'm on my playlist. And I've got this little thing that this is under called Stories and Memories. And I just wanted to kind of share with you uh, who I am. Because, you know, you see a lot of stuff on YouTube and people teaching guitar. And I, I, there's a lot of great teachers out there. Um, not to dissuade anyone. I just believe in what I'm doing. And I, I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't. But I want to tell you how all of this happened for me. And it's now been, like I said, almost 20 years. When I had a corporate job, uh, I worked for a financial firm. I'm not going to say who they were, but I was a coach and a trainer. And then I became somebody because of their downsizing, someone who had to really move more into transfers and seeing money transfer to other, um, from other companies into ours. And it became kind of monotonous and frustrating. And uh, yeah, I'm a believer. And I just... I was frustrated and I heard him say to me, I want you to fast for three days. So I did. And I fasted for three days and I was done with it. And it was actually, you know, it, it wasn't hard to do at all. I, I was, I was at peace during the whole time. Anyways, um, I'm in prayer after that and I'm praying and I'm asking him, you know, why did you have me do that? And as clear as a bell, I got this because I told you to. So I'm like, okay, I'm a guy. I get it. Okay, because you told me to. Well, you know, really what was happening is he was training me to hear his voice and, I, and to trust that it was him um, and to not be deceived if, I, if something else came up. So um, at this financial firm I was working at, it had been probably about um, maybe about six months later into that, and I ended up going to this different congregation called Kaelat Sar Shalom. It's a messianic congregation. And uh, they observed the Sabbath, the actual Sabbath, from Friday night to Saturday night. And I've been doing that now for 20 years plus. But I remember when I started going there, and one of the elders who was greeting me said, Phil, are you starting to keep the Sabbath? And I said, well, yeah, I guess I am. I mean, I just felt led to do it. And she looked at me and she said, that's awesome. You won't believe the blessings that God is going to pour into your life. And she turned around and walked away. And I just kind of stood there stunned to hear that. It just stuck with me. So a couple months go by and I'm at my work and I'm sitting in my cubicle and I'm just frustrated. And I've been seeing opportunities open up. And he said, stay where you're at, stay where you're at. And I saw another opportunity and I heard him say, stay where you're at. And I said, you know, if I'm being obedient, when's this going to change? I don't know how much more of this I can take. It was just so frustrating to work in that environment. So the following weekend, I'm at service, and of course I'm helping lead praise and worship. And afterwards, uh, a friend of mine, his name's Dan, came up to me and slapped me on the back and said, Phil, you ought to teach guitar for a living. And I looked at him, I'm like, Dan, you can't make any money at that. He's like, are you serious? You could make some serious, a decent income. You can make a good living from it. You should check it out. Totally oblivious that a couple days prior, I said, when's it going to change, right, in prayer. And so I started looking into it. And I called up a local company, a uh, music store, Schmidt Music, and I asked them if they had any openings for guitar teachers. And they said, you know, we really don't. We're full. But there's this one guy. He, he's got uh, Burnsville Conservatory of Music, and his name is Scott. I'm not going to use last names on this, but... Uh, well, why not? I can. His name is Scott Winters. Anyway, so I went and I got home and, and I called him up because they gave me his phone number. And he said to me, are you calling me about the job that I posted on my website this morning? <laughs> um, I didn't know that you had just posted that this morning, but I was referred to you by Schmidt to possibly inquire. He's like, well, Phil, yeah. Why don't you come on over, bring your resume, and we'll we'll have a time to do an interview. So I lined it up. I went over the following week because it was on a Friday. And I went in and had an interview with him in the evening, on a Monday evening, I think it was. And we had a really great conversation. Um, I went to Gustavus. He went to St. Olaf. In Minnesota, there's small colleges, and there's sometimes these rivalries. And Gustavus and St. Olaf are kind of a rivalry, um, friendly rivalry. But, you know, so we kind of hit it off that way. And he knew uh, my guitar instructors because he went to St. Olaf. Uh, Jim McGuire was my classical, and Rick Orpin was my jazz. And, and he knew them, called them up after the interview, 
and they both remembered me, which, you know, I says something, I guess, according to Scott. He said, they both remember you, Phil, and you must have made an impression when you were there. I'm like, well, okay, you know. Um, anyways, so when I first interviewed with him, the next couple days I prayed about it, and I thought, you know, I'm not gonna make enough money to work for him. I've gotta do this on my own. So I sent him an email, and this is like early December, sent him an email and said, I just, I, I'm gonna have to do this on my own. I really appreciate talking with you, but I gotta do this on my own. So. After the holidays, early January, um, he calls me up and says, Phil, I know you're going to do your own thing, but I'm really hoping that you could come and work for me, maybe even one day out of the week. My phone's been ringing off the hook ever since I interviewed you, and I need to get a guitar teacher in here. And with your background and me talking to Rick and Jim, I know you'd be a great fit. And I said, well, let me pray about it, and I'll call you back tomorrow. So I hung up the phone and I seriously got this visual of a white two by four in the sky coming and hitting me in the forehead. And I heard him say, this is what you're supposed to do. What do I have to do to get through to you? And I said, okay, well, I told him I'd pray and call him back tomorrow. So I'm gonna, I'll call him back tomorrow, okay? You know, this is the stuff that happens, right? <laughs> I'll do it, but I, I gotta keep my word. And so anyways, so I call him back up the next day and he's like, this is great. I said, you know, so what's the deal? He goes, well, Phil, I had a former teacher take my entire student load of guitar students and he stole them from me. Didn't tell me about it, just a nasty experience he had. I said, wow, Scott, well, you know, going in, you know I'm gonna be doing my own studio thing. And he goes, I do, Phil, and it's up front. And I, I said, Scott, I would never take a student away from you, no matter what, that's just not honorable. He goes, I know that, I can tell that from, our discussions. So anyways, so I start teaching and I teach January and February and it kind of gets into early March and it exploded. I had enough students within that two month period to leave my corporate job of 13 years because of how it just exploded. Now that's not saying that I was making my same salary. I had to, you know, trim things here and there and, and watch it, but I knew something was happening. So I walked in um, to teach on Monday nights and I saw Scott and I said, well, Scott, that's it. He's like, what do you mean that's it? I said, I quit my job. He freaked. He's like, Phil, it takes two to three years to build a studio. And I, I honestly, I just said to him, no, it doesn't. I'm stepping out on faith. He's got me. I, I know he's got me. He goes, all right, man. Okay. I mean, he, he was worried. So... I'm still teaching there and I'm starting to get students here. You know, it's building, it's building. Another two months go by and I walked in to the conservatory and you know, I had my, my lessons and I said, Scott, I'm going to need to look at quitting here because I'm so busy at my own studio. And he, he's like, what do you mean? How, how busy are you? What, how many students do you have? I was at 50 students. In four months, I was at 50 students. <laughs> Scott looks at me and goes, I've never seen anything like it. And I said, I know. I mean, I don't know, because this is all new. But this huge blessing is just being dumped. So he's like, well, okay, Phil. So that's, see, January, February, March, April, May. So it's, it's like May. And he's like, Phil, could you do me a favor and you just help me out through the summer? And I'm like, okay. You know, so May, June, July, um, another, it's about another two, two and a half months go by. And he's like, hey, I got everything in order. You know, it's it's all good. By the way, there is a student who you have, her, her name was Mallory Johnson, and their family would really like to go to your studio. And because you've been honest with me, Phil, and you've helped me out so much, I want you to have them move over to your studio. Wow, Scott, you know, you don't need to do that. He goes, Man, it's this. It's just saying a way. It's just a way to say thanks. I said, okay, okay. So he looks at me and he says, "By the way, <laughs> how many students do you have?" I was over seventy students, seventy students in a little more than six months, like six months in a week. Now is that insane? He looked at me and he said, "I've never seen anything like it," and I said. <laughs> know what to say. He goes, can you pour some of that blessing out on me? I said, Scott, I'm not in charge of this. 
he's the one running the show. I'm just being obedient. And he's like, Phil, man, I wish you the best of luck. And I said, Scott, thanks. You know, same with you. You know, because he just wasn't running a studio for guitar students. He was running for piano, horns, you know, strings, violins, basses, trombones. I mean, he, he had a conservatory going. And I'm like, well, were you able to find somebody? He's like, yep, I, I think I got somebody lined up. I just want to say thanks. And I was like, well, thank you, Scott. So now I'm going to kind of go back here. Because that's what happened. I mean, that's the reality. And I've shared that with people who are believers and people who aren't. I, I'm not trying to offend anybody. I'm just telling you what happened to me. So when I ended up quitting at this financial institution, it was in downtown Minneapolis. And I was one of the highest producers in our unit. I always had the highest numbers. And uh, I was always asked, how do you get your numbers up so high? And one time, well, I was getting close to quitting anyways, but our team leader asked me in, in a meeting with everyone there. And this isn't trying to be braggadocious, but I kind of had it because a lot of people in our unit weren't working. They were gabbing, talking during the day. She said, Phil, now she knew that this was going to come and be coming because she, she knew my personality. I just kind of tell it like it is. I'm not going to mince words. So she asked me, Phil, how is it that your numbers are so high? And I said, Tracy, do you really want me to answer that? She goes, yes. I said, well, I do my job. I don't talk to people. I don't call people on the phone, wasting my time. I sit down at my desk. I put headphones on and I do my job because I'm supposed to do it. Well, of course, that really went over great. It went over great with her. It didn't go over great with other people. Now I had some close friends that were in that unit and they didn't mind me saying that. But the day I left, okay, the day I left, my very last day, it's like they forgot I was leaving. I'd been at that company for 13 years and every time somebody left, they would have a they would have a special potluck and everyone would bring a something for the potluck and we'd all have an hour and a half meeting of just saying goodbyes not me no potluck nothing in fact i remember hearing this i i went to tracy i said you know do you think i can leave like an hour and a half early i just I'm, there's nothing really for me to do and she's like phil yeah yeah go ahead go ahead and pack up well at that announcement everyone heard that and they realized that I was leaving. And so all of a sudden, I heard them. <laughs> so they rushed down to the cafeteria to get a cake. Nothing on it. They had a card. They all signed it real quick. And they all, you know, called me over. Um, and, hey, we got a cake for you. And we got a card for you. And I was like, oh, thanks, you know. <laughs> I said, you didn't need to do that. And, oh, no, 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 no. You know, okay, okay. So I read the card. And Tracy asked me, so are you excited? I'm like, yeah, I get to go home to live my dream. Now, some people in that unit were saying, having tears because they really were going to miss me. And some people were having tears because they knew they didn't have an out. They knew they had to stay where they were at. I don't know if that's changed for them, but some were crying tears for me and some were crying tears for themselves. So it was all over. I was done. I get in my car and it's mid afternoon and I'm driving home and it's a summer day, kind of warm day. And I'm coming down 35. I'm going to get into the cross town and that's 62, which goes east to west. And it kind of goes through uh, Bloomington area. And then it, then it goes south again, down into the Burnsville area. And as I take that turn and I'm heading east or I'm heading west on 62, I feel this force and it's like around me. And as, as I get to the spot where I'm going to start turning south, this huge force just moves through my body and leaves the car. It, I, I don't know if it was stress. I don't know what it was. I, you know, I believe it was God just sending me a message because after that happened, I started heading south. I heard, you're done. You're done. You're never going back to that. And I never have. I've been able to do this almost 20 years and it's been such a blessing and when you're able to live a dream like that and it becomes a reality it's special and that's my story so if anybody is watching this it's my story i hope you enjoyed it 
it really was, I believe, a spiritual blessing that became a financial blessing that in turn has become a blessing for me to be a blessing to all of my students. And moving forward with the books I've written, hopefully, well, I pray to be a blessing to people worldwide, to affect a change for people to become better guitar players. And that's it. Thanks for listening. God bless.